All right, back with another once every four months vlog. So the Beatles' final song. If you know me, you know I really love the Beatles. I got a John Lennon tattoo on my arm. Poster there. 90% of the songs I could play on piano or guitar. Beatles. If you don't know the story already, after John Lennon died, they found a bunch of demo recordings of song ideas on his like cassette tape, and Yoko gave the cassette tape to Paul and Ringo and George, and they made two songs from it in the 90s. They like put their stuff over top the recording, and now and then. This most recent song, at the time, his vocals were, like, very hard to hear. They couldn't separate his voice like they could the other songs. Now comes AI, they're able to separate his voice using machine learning. It's the same technology they used for the Get Back documentary that came out last year, so... Here's the thing about Now and Then. Of all the demo songs, there's like a ton that you could find on YouTube. They get pulled down a lot, so I like literally downloaded them. I think there's a lot of better demos than Now and Then. I do not really like Now and Then to begin with. It's kind of boring to me. I'm a huge John Lennon fan, dude. That song, not my favorite. And I don't know if Yoko gave them just those three, or if she gave them a bunch and they picked those three. All that to say, I do think there's cooler, sloppily recorded songs by John Lennon that they could have done. The documentary was pretty cool. The moment they reveal his isolated voice after telling the story of how they couldn't really isolate it in the past was very cool. I think the strings they show them playing uh, somewhere in the documentary. They sound great. It makes the melody. I was like, oh, wow, I didn't realize how much I, I did like that melody. Because you hear a violin playing it, and I'm like, oh, I can't wait to hear the finished song. Sounds like it's going to be good. And then, you know, I listened to the finished song. Uh, it just sounded kind of plain, dude. I don't know. It sounded pretty basic. It sounds like the voice is the coolest part. And then everything else just kind of sounds like stock instruments almost. That they're just like, I don't know, they're just playing chords. And I, I again... Dude, the Beatles, like, I'm nowhere near the level of talent Paul McCartney and Ringo have, but I don't know, man. Just really didn't it didn't connect with me in ways that all their other songs do. Pretty safe, I would say. In the documentary, they're talking about how they, were, they like to experiment and stuff, and the most experimental thing about it was the AI. Beyond that, it was just pretty straightforward instruments. So Free as a Bird and Real Love, the songs they made in the 90s using his recordings, same thing with those ones. I really do prefer his shitty recording over what they did. It just kind of loses the heart. The orchestra in the documentary sounded sick. You couldn't really hear it in the final recording, so I don't know what the deal was with that. Paul mentioned in the documentary how they wanted to use an orchestra because, you know, prime Beatles used orchestras, but I Am The Walrus is a great example of that. I Am The Walrus Orchestra Isolated, it's like its own song, dude. Obviously like A Day In The Life as well which is probably a closer song tonally to the one they just put out. They just have more twists and turns and it just feels like there's more depth to them. This felt like I was looking at the logic file and you could just see the loops and the sections. I don't know, but maybe I'm being a dick. The thing about John Lennon songs, some of these demos I didn't like at first and then like a year later, two years later, I'll listen again and it hits me. So this could, that could happen with this song, but currently in my current state of mind, it is not for me. I love Mucho Mungo, that's one, which actually Harry Nilsson, I guess, made later. I think he wrote it for him, but his version, no offense, way better. Luckily, I downloaded it because it got pulled. And the best part is you could hear his, like the ba his, you know, Sean, his son, as a baby, like he makes a sound in the background that almost adds to the song in the beginning. Maybe I'm crazy. <laughs> So there's that one. Gone from this place. That one's great, dude. This one is great, too. I think this one would have been sick. Don't be afraid. So yeah, I don't really know what uh, the thought process was behind choosing Now and Then. Maybe that's he, most lyrics, maybe they, that's the one Yoko gave them, maybe these are covers and I didn't know. I have no idea. It's cool that Paul could like work with a John Canvas again. I, I totally 
respect the the documentary was awesome the fact they did it is really cool i don't want to like discourage even doing something like that again with other demos music sometimes it hits you sometimes it doesn't but when it does hit damn it's like transcend dude i'll float and it feels like god is like my soul is like a wine glass and the song is god's finger and you know how he makes it vibrate he's like making my soul vibrate all right enough of that bro oh, i'll show you my tattoo real quick the john lennon drawing it's him and yoko I got it on a bus on St. Mark's for like 50 bucks. So yeah, 